My name is Guangzhou, and uh, I'm a PhD student from Carnegie Mellon University. And uh, our paper is View-Based Luminance Mapping in Open Workplace. Okay, first for the introduction. When we look at a human eye, it includes all amazing details. When we perceive the 3D world, all information will come through the eyeball into our mind. When we design a space, we need to balance the daylight availability and the visual comfort. On the one hand, we need sufficient light levels for different indoor activities. On the other hand, too much light will cause glare and overheating problems. So there are some previous studies, for example, compare quantitative light measurement with the user's subjective service using VR to display the entire scene and identify user's visual interest. Analyze view accessibility and quantify the view score for different floor areas. And identify the user's view preference within the field of the view. And for the specific literature review, uh, HDR, high dynamic range photography, has been widely used to capture the pixel information from the real world and study the luminance distribution in the 3D space, like open workplace and the private office room here. However, it's time consuming for long-term HDR photography. And the results are limited by the number of photographs and the camera positions. Some studies focused on the view analysis within the field of view. For example, the entire fisheye image is divided into small areas. The left study focused on the target space like desk, monitor, and the glazing space. And the right study asked the user to label the overlit region. However, the results were based on user's annotation instead of computationally filtered pixel values. Comparing to field measurement, computational simulation provides more flexibility in time selection and the camera settings. For example, the first study used the VR to study the human's visual perception, and uh, the second study simulated 300, 360 degree panoramic scenes. And the last one using fisheye image as the base, then projects the pixels to design the shading device. However, those studies focused on a single view position and direction, the view height and the location are fixed. The 3D fisheye projection focused on point-in-time simulation instead of long-term simulation. The challenges in open workplace, multiple view directions due to different computer screens, and the multiple view heights due to adjustable standing desks, occupants different luminance thresholds due to individual preference. So the objectives are to develop a geometry-based method to project the 2D fisheye image into the 3D space, to perform batch luminance simulation for both point-in-time and uh, annual mode. Use different luminance thresholds to outline the facade areas that emit excessive luminance from different view positions and direction. Methodology. This study selected an open workplace. The space is north-south facing, and the south elevation will be selected for mapping studies. And the three viewpoints are selected here. For each view position and the luminance simulation, we set a human sits in front of the computer screen, and the view direction is from human eye into the center of the monitor. And the results will use 3,000 candela per meter square as the upper limit. Here we can see the result from the occupant's perspective, where the right side is lit by direct sunlight. 
typically the rendered scene is noisy. So we need to smooth the image. Here we use bilateral filtering. So in this case, it smooths the, the, the image while keeping the edges. For the large number of rendered image, we use 2000 candela per meter square uh, to binarize the image. So in this case, the luminance value above 2000 candela per meter square will be regarded as overlit values. Then all binarized images will be added up and divided by the total number of images. So the result will show the frequency of the occurrence of the overlaid pixels. And then we can filter the frequency pretty flexibly. Like here, we filter the result by 50 percentile time frequency. Actually, we can test the different time frequency. Uh, the higher fr uh, percentile and the less area will be outlined. For this study, we choose 50 percentile because it covers the glazing and the part of the ceiling and the floor area. Now we have a 2D image. We first translate the 2D pixel into 3D coordinate, then map all pixels on the hemisphere. Image dimension is decreased, decreased from 400 by 400 into 80 by 80. The reason is uh, when we compare different image resolution and the computation time, we need to balance the time and the uh, accuracy. So when we choose the resolution in 80 by 80, it maintains the edge of each surface while it achieves pretty short computation time. So overall, the workflow is to simulate the luminous value, translate to the image into 3D spherical coordinate, then project pixels into 3D space. At the end, outline the facade areas by projected geometries. For the final result, the result one, we use the single view position and the run simulation every six minutes from 1 to 2 p.m. on March 21st in Pittsburgh, USA. Following the workflow, the result shows where the 2000 candela meter square occurred over 50% of the time. And then we project the pixel onto the facade surface. So that's a potential overlit area from the opponent. For the result two, we use the same view position and the same simulation settings. Then run the simulation every one hour from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the result will show the target areas and the outline the facade surface by this view in different months. So we can see during November, December, and January, the bottom facade won't be outlined. While the left, middle, and the upper right facade consistently show overlaid problems. For the result three, we consider when there are three occupants in this space and their desks are all in different heights. So the result shows the outline the facade area by three individual occupants and how they overlapped together. So the color transparency shows the areas outlined by the number of occupants. In the meantime, we also tested the method in June and December. In the December, the lower part of the facade won't, won't be outlined comparing to March and June. Besides, the upper middle area consistently show overlaid problems from three occupants. So the conclusion, this study proposed an occupant-centric luminance mapping. It filters target luminance by filtering the pixels to, within the field of view. Then it translates 2D fissure image into 3D surface and it performs batch simulation and the result analysis. So for the application in design, 
in the future, we can test more occupants with more uh, new positions and directions. And it can be applied into other building typologies, including hospital, school, and residence. We also need to test the different climate zones, weather conditions, and the time periods. At the end, we can use this method to design some novel facade patterns and uh, also internal external shooting devices. Yeah, this is my presentation. Thank you for your listening.